All right, it is time to review inverse trig, your test coming up. Uh, first things first, this uh, chart up here in the top right, make sure you know that uh, by heart. You're going to be using it a lot and uh, using it for every one of these problems. So uh, we're actually going to skip number one, looking at number two first. Arc cosine of root 2 over 2, meaning the inverse cosine of root 2 over 2, you can see in the chart it happens at 45 degrees, but that's only one of the answers because cosine is positive in quadrant 1 and 4. So we need to figure out in quadrant 4, 315 degrees is the angle with 45 being your reference angle. Remember, all students take calculus, probably should know that chart as well. So now let's go back to number 1. Uh, sine of negative one half, arc sine of negative one half. Well, look in the chart. There's one half for sine at 30 degrees. So 30 degrees is one of the potential answers, except we don't want positive. We want negative. Sine is negative in quadrants three and four. So 30 degrees in quadrant three is 210. In quadrant four is 330. So 180 plus 30 and 360 minus 30. Uh, number three, arctan of root three over three. There it is, again, 30 degrees in your chart. So 30 degrees is your answer for quadrant one. Tangent also positive in quadrant three. So 210 degrees for your second answer. They'll all have two answers here. This last one, arc secant of two. Well, we don't like secant. Uh, it's not in that chart over there. So we're going to have to switch it around to arc cosecant. So instead of saying when secant equals two, that's the same as saying when does cosine equal one half. So, well, that's nice because cosine of one-half exists. Cosine exists, uh, cosine of 60 is equal to one-half, and that's the quadrant one answer. The other one for cosine is quadrant four, so 300. Uh, five and six, uh, really kind of easy, just doing an extra step. The trick here is that you're going to have answers that are uh, positive or negative for both of uh, these problems, for any problem when you have a sine of an inverse function. And here's why. Arc cosine of one half, well, we just did that in the last problem. It was uh, 60 and 300 here. We want to now know what sine of 60 and sine of 300 are. Well, sine of 60 in the chart is the square root of 3 over 2. That's easy. It's right there in the chart. Sine of 300, well, it's again a reference angle of 60. And uh, so it means you look at the chart, root 3 over 2, but in quadrant 4, it's negative. So that's why we get positive and negative uh, for all of these answers. Always going to happen. Uh, next one, arctan of root 3. Uh, that happens there in the chart at 60 degrees. And in quadrant 3 for tangent at 240 degrees. So we're taking cosine of both of those. Cosine of 60, it's already circled over there, is 1 half. So negative 1 half is your other answer, positive and negative one half for this problem. All right, now to the equation problems. If we look at this first one, uh, basically look here in numbers seven, eight, and 10, underlining those values that are uh, inside of parentheses. Ignore those for the beginning. Just ignore them till the very end of the problem. If it helps, treat the trig function like an x, like I just did here. Three, uh, square root of 3 times x equals 1. Call that entire trig function an x if that helps you in terms of solving it. So to do that, you're going to divide both sides by the square root of 3. Uh, don't want to leave it on the bottom. We normally see it in the chart down there as root 3 over 3. So tangent equaling root 3 over 3. We're going to take the inverse tan, the arc tan of both sides technically. When does tangent equal the square root of 3 over 3? That happens at 30 degrees. So we're going to have uh, 30 degrees. And then the other uh, quadrant would be quadrant 3 uh, for when tangent is positive. So 30 degrees and 3, or I'm sorry, 210 degrees uh, for our two uh, answers. Our two times that equals each other. But those cancel out, and it leaves us just two theta on the inside. And here's where it's big. Uh, to get theta by itself, well, divide everything by 2. 2 theta divided by 2 gives you 1 theta. We get 15 degrees and 105 degrees. So all we did is divide everything by two. So if you have something on the inside, uh, that's the last step is just to divide by two or whatever the number is on the inside. Uh, so it's our number eight here. First, subtract the two over to the other side. So secant of whatever equals negative two. Leave the crap alone on the inside, but we can't have secant. Again, it's not in our chart down there. So flip to cosine. That means that the other side is what flips. The inside here is what's going to stay the same. Cosine still of one half theta, but now equals negative one half on the right side because we flipped that fraction. Cosine equals one half in the chart uh, at 60 degrees when we do this inverse cosine of both sides. But again, 60 degrees is not what we're going to want 
uh, because we want quadrants 2 and 3. That's where cosine is negative. So I write 60 down just to kind of remind myself, but it is negative, so quadrant 2 and 3. So 120 degrees for quadrant 2 and 240 degrees uh, for quadrant 3. And that's what's equal to the inside, which is 1 half theta. So theta will equal, and here's where people will mess up. You're dividing by 1 half. This is probably the most frequently missed. You divide by 1 half. It's not 60 and 120. Divide by 1 half means multiply by 2. So you'll get answers of 240 and 480. So be careful with that divide by 1 half. Number 9 now, it's a trinomial, uh, which is nice. We have equal to 0 already. That's good. That's what you need to have on anything where you factor. Uh, treat this, if it helps, as an x squared minus 2x plus 1. I'm just calling sine of theta equaling to x. How would I factor that? Well, that would be x minus 1 times x minus 1. Well, sine of theta minus 1 times sine of theta minus 1. So we're going to set each one of those equal to zero. Hey, they're both the same thing. So really, I only need to set once equal to zero because, well, both factors will give you the same answer. So now we're easy. Add the one over. Sine of theta equals positive one. Theta equals one, uh, or sine, excuse me, equals one at 90 degrees. Uh, let's check and see if there's another one. Easiest way, I think, is looking at the circle. Up there at the top is where sine equals one. The y value equals one. Down there at the bottom is negative one. So 270 is not a proper answer. You have just one angle, 90 degrees, here for this problem in number nine. Uh, number 10 is another kind of factoring. Uh, you can only factor, though. You're going to factor anytime you have two different trig functions there, and I'm subtracting the two co cotangent over to the left-hand side so that we have something equaling zero. And what's going to happen is you're going to have something you can factor out. In this case, it's cotangent of theta that you can factor out. What's left behind is cosecant 3 theta minus 2. So just like in the last problem, I have two things that multiply to equal 0. I'm going to set them both equal to 0. So cotangent is equal to 0, and the cosecant of crap minus 2 equals 0. And I just solve both of them straight up like that. So cotangent equals 0. Got to flip it around. That's the same as saying tangent is undefined. Well, where does that happen? The chart says at 90 degrees, and there may be another one. We'll have to look. So again, look at that circle on the left. Uh, 270 degrees is another place that will happen because tangent is y divided by x. At the bottom, you still have x equaling 0. That's why 270 is another place tangent is undefined. Uh, the other one, add the 2 over to the right-hand side to start. Um, we'll flip it just like we did in previous problems. Sine of 3 theta now equals 1 half. Uh, so when does sine equal 1 half? That's at 30 degrees. And uh, also in quadrant 2 at 150 degrees, I'm running out of room here. Uh, that's going to equal 3 theta for what the inside was. So divide both of those values by 3 to get just 1 theta. That's how I get 10 and 50. So 10, 50, 90, and 270 are all answers for this problem. All right, let's move on down to number 11. And with uh, cotangent of square root of 3, that's a pretty straightforward, easy one, but we don't like cotangent, so let's flip this to uh, square root of 3 over 3. Really, you're flipping it to be 1 over the square root of 3, but we can rationalize that. That uh, is why we get uh, square root of 3 over 3, uh, and that's just straight from our chart. Happens at 30 degrees for quadrant 1, and in quadrant 3, 210. Pretty straightforward. That's the easiest one here for the equation problems. Uh, in number uh, 12 here, kind of running out of room, but secant of 1 half theta times tangent of 2 theta, kind of like the last problem, we're going to subtract that 2 tan of 2 theta over to the left-hand side. And when we do that, we now have that tangent 2 theta that's the same for both parts of that equation. So I factor it out, and what's left behind? Uh, the secant 1 half theta and minus 2. This problem is actually really similar to what we just did in number 10. Set each one of those equal to 0. Tangent of garbage equals 0, and secant of other garbage minus 2 equals 0. Solve them both. Uh, tangent equaling 0. Again, ignore the garbage. Tangent equals 0 at 90 degrees and 270 degrees. We just did that in a previous problem. That's what's equal to 2 theta. So divide both of those by 2 uh, to get your two values for that. But we also have the secant equation. Don't change this secant into cosine yet. First get secant by itself. Now flip to cosine and flip the right-hand side to be positive one-half. So cosine of one-half theta will equal one-half. 
quadrant one and four. Uh, so it will equal at 60 degrees and 300 degrees. Set each of those, uh, or set that equal to the inside, which is one half theta. And again, careful when you divide by a one half, you're multiplying by two. So 120 and 600. So there's your four answers for number 12. Uh, 13, you got cosine squared and cosine. Those are two technically different variables. So bring everything to the same side. We're going to factor. So I subtract the three cosine over and I'll add the three over uh, to both sides to give me a plus two. That makes it equal to zero. That's what we need is something equal to zero. Allows us to do factoring, in this case, trinomial. And it'll be, think of it if you have to, x squared minus 3x plus 2. You get negative 2 and negative 1. So cosine minus 2, cosine minus 1, set them both equal to 0. Cosine uh, equaling 2 and cosine of theta equaling 1. Cosine of theta equaling 1, that's pretty straightforward. Look right at your chart. There's only one value that that happens. That's at 0 degrees. Beautiful. Uh, done just like that. Uh, double check and make sure over there on the left, that's negative one. So that's no bueno. Uh, only on the right-hand side at zero degrees is where you have positive one. Now this other guy, cosine equaling two, doesn't happen. There's nowhere in that chart that cosine equals two. Cosine can't be bigger than one. So just that one answer this time, and it's possible, yeah, that one part will get you a negative or will get you a no solution. The whole thing's not no solution, just that one value. Now for 14, uh, I'm going to subtract the tangent over to the right-hand side. I could have subtracted the two tangent to the left. doesn't matter. Uh, this is a little bit easier. It gives us positive values, especially when I add the 5 over to the left. So when does tangent equal 1? Chart says 45 degrees. The uh, third quadrant answer is 225. So pretty straightforward there. You'll divide both of those by 3 to get you what theta equals, which is 15 and 75 degrees. All right, two final problems to go, and probably my two favorite. 15 is pretty easy just for the fact that we're already factored. Set both of those guys equal to zero immediately. So 2 sine squared minus 1 equals zero, and the cosine squared minus 1 equals zero. We'll solve both of them. Uh, subtract, or I'm sorry, add the 1 over. Now divide by 2. Now, you're taking a square root of both sides to get just sine. When you take the square root of 1, you get 1. On the bottom, square root of 2. Don't forget plus or minus. You took a square root. Got to be plus or minus. So 1 over root 2 is the same as root 2 over 2. So when on your chart, well, that's 45 degrees in the chart, plus or minus means we go on all four quadrants because you're positive in quadrant 1 and 2 for sine, negative in quadrant 3 and 4 for sine. So 45, 135, uh, 225, and 315 are the angles. Now, for the other equation, same idea, add 1 over, take a square root, cosine will equal plus or minus 1. So again, we're going to want something in all four quadrants. Well, cosine only equals 1 uh, at 180, or at 0 degrees, excuse me, but negative 1 at 180. Again, use the, uh, the chart to help you figure that out. Uh, and the last one, as so you see, divide the 3 over, we'll square root both sides, to get secant theta equals square root of 4 is 2, and just root 3 on the bottom. We don't like secant. It flips to cosine. Uh, don't forget that plus or minus there. Uh, plus or minus root 3 over 2. So again, we want all four quadrants. Cosine equals root 3 over 2 at 30 degrees. But for the other four quadrants, uh, it's positive in 300 and negative in 2 and 3 at 150 and 210. So all four of those answers for 16. There you have it. Best of luck. And don't forget the charts.